Uh, so these are provings. Uh, he, I've, I've proved, uh, you know, the noble gases. I very much uh, believe that the noble gases are essential to an understanding of the whole periodic table. Maybe I'll teach you one of the noble gas remedies, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you more about that later. Argon, krypton, xenon, radon. Uh, this is uh, Haliathus leucocephalus, the eagle, a uh, very syphilitic remedy. Uh, this is wild rice approved in uh, Minnesota, Zizania, uh, that's the wild rice. And this is Triticum diocoroides, this is wheat, but it's not the wheat that we eat today, it's the original wheat, the, the first wheat that was existing on the planet before mankind spoiled the wheat by cultivating it until we get so many allergies to wheat and so problems with uh, wheat today. This was the one that came before all that. Uh, it's found in Israel. It was discovered there. Uh, this is Populus canadensis. This, this tree was uh, the biggest tree of its kind in the world. It was a champion tree. <coughs> it won world championships. Uh, it's, uh, it was very famous. Last year it blew down in the wind, unfortunately. But we have its essence in the proving. Um, Taxus baccata is another tree that I've proved. You know it maybe from Taxol. It's similar to Taxol that they use for cancer. Fitolaca uh, is another remedy I've proved. Jade, a very expensive, uh, the most expensive substance in the world. You know, they say you can measure the worth of diamonds and you can measure the worth of gold, but you can't measure the worth of jade. It's more, it's so expensive that it's worth, you can't even start to think how much it's worth and how much it's valuable. Um, that's jade. Uh, we proved hafnium metallicum. The reason we did it in Copenhagen is hafnium is a uh, Latin name for uh, Denmark and for Copenhagen. So that's why I did it over there. I tried to fit the element to the country that uh, we're proving. Uh, I proved sapphire and Dama Dama, this is Bambi, you know, and Calopteryx splendens, this is uh, the damselfly, it's like a dragonfly. But I'll just say to you briefly, this is the best remedy you'll find for sinusitis and colds. This is a fantastic remedy for that. Uh, when my wife and myself took it, you know, when we do approving, I always do it with my wife and uh, together. And we know it's going to be trouble. It's going to be big trouble in the family. So whenever we take the remedy, we say, welcome to the divorce. You know, it's like we know that usually we have a very good relationship, but when we take the proving, I go that way, she goes that way. And it's like we look at each other and we say, what, who are you and what are you doing in my house? And then we start fighting. Uh, it's always like that. But from the nature of our fighting, for two months fighting, we can tell the nature of the proving. Uh, because you get both sides of the remedy and the two opposites that, that clash. But when we took the Scalopteryx splendens, within 30 seconds we were both full with our sinuses and our eyes and our head and a, a cold. I've never seen a remedy work so quickly. We both had this terrible cold and, uh, you know, that's how you find out you never forget what a remedy can do. So uh, you, this is one of the things about uh, Calopteryx. Uh, other than now big argument, I'll tell you that I became like an old man all the time fussing about everything that has to be done and duty and responsibility and what we have to do and the list of things and she became like a young 18 year old girl whose only interest was to have highlights in her hair and drink cappuccino and uh, every day I would give her these long lists of, um, of things that she has to do and she would say okay no problem and then she would go to the to the hairdresser and drink cappuccino. And that's why we argued all the time. So those are the, partly the two sides of the remedy. Calopteryx. Brassica, um, Napus, this is a very um, useful remedy. Androctonus was my first proving. Uh, that's how I got into it. It was really by mistake. I was uh, living in Israel before I studied homeopathy, and many times I saw people getting stung by, by scorpions like this. And I thought, when I came to look in the Materia Medica, and I saw there's no scorpion. I thought, how can there be no scorpion? 
and that's why I did the first proving. And I, I went out in the field to pick up stones and look for a scorpion. Um, you know, and I'd read somewhere that uh, the way to get the poison out of the scorpion's tail is to connect it to 12 volt. You give 12 volt and it squirts out the poison. So I took my old Jeep, I connect two wires to the battery, zoom, zoom, I'm revving it up, we connect the battery to the scorpion, we put the tail of the scorpion in a test tube, I give gas, they're shouting to me, more gas, more gas, I'm giving more gas, more gas, and no poison came out. But afterwards I find out that the, scor the scorpion produces so little poison that you don't even see it. You see, a poison of a scorpion is six times more intense than a poison of a cobra, for instance. So you don't need a lot, and you probably wouldn't even see it. And that's why for a poison of scorpion, you, you can pay just for a drop $5,000, you know. Today they're using it in Mexico, for instance, for cancer, for brain cancer. It's become a popular uh, allopathic medicine that, that they're actually experimenting with. Uh, but... Um, this is actually a, a quite a poisonous scorpion that we use. I got it from the Institute of Scorpions in Israel. That was my first proving. I didn't know anything about provings and how to do provings. Uh, <clears throat> so I just went and I gave it to friends in my class and I told them to give me a note of what is happening and that's how it happened. Of course, I learned many things from my mistakes, I hope, of how to do a chocolate I did with you in in uh, Mumbai many years ago. Um, Adamas, the diamond, it's a very common remedy we use a lot. Olive, this is uh, olive from Israel, and, um, you know, a very important remedy. We use it in Africa a lot, especially in cases of malnutrition in children. This is a very good remedy because olives are the essence of, uh, of nutrition, really. Um, this is the olive tree, one of the trees that we took the remedy from. They grow very old. This could be over a thousand years old, this olive tree. Um, Dama Dama already mentioned. And uh, this is gallium and germanium. I might talk about them a little bit. Uh, these are extremely useful remedies that we use. There's not a week goes by in my clinic when I don't use these remedies. They are very important, both in the fourth row, element 31 and 32. Hydrogen, the first remedy of all. Cygnus, Cygnus, uh, the swan. This is an amazing remedy. I don't know if you've used it at all. Has anybody used it here? It's, a, it's a, the first remedy in severe grief. I, I call it, uh, you know, when I talk about uh, Cygnus, Cygnus, I don't know if I have a pen here. Ah, yeah. I, I call it um, Nat Moore squared plus Ignatia in the third equals Cygnus. Like that. Yeah. It's, you know, many stories about the swan are about the swan ha having a pair. They pair for life, and then one of the swans dies, and the other one is, you know, left totally alone and stories of even the swan committing suicide, you know, from that, or many mythologies about the swan in that way, of, uh, always about one swan, swan dying. I don't know if you know the ballet Swan Lake, and this is kind of the same kind of energy. It's a very, very deep grief, and, you know, it really reaches places where our common grief remedies uh, do not go. Um, Cygnus, Cygnus, Hafnium, I told you about. Plutonium, I, I think I talked about it over here once, or I don't know, maybe. A, a very deep remedy, of course. I was, when I did this proving, I was very, very scared to prove it. it was, there were no provings of radioactive elements at the time, and I, I was looking for it. Uh, Rajan's son yesterday asked me, where did you find the plutonium? I said to him, I have a plutonium plant in the back of my garden. Uh, but I really worked 10 years to find the plutonium. So, and finally I got a bit of it in, diluted in water, and I was very scared to do the proving. Uh, but in the end, it wasn't the worst proving I've done. 
you know, I've done provings that were much, uh, much worse when we often sit and think, what was the worst proving we've done, my wife and myself? And we, it's difficult to decide because there were so many horrible experiences. You know, it's terrible, the things that happen to you on provings. It's not easy. I say that I have a scar from every provings that I've done left, you know. But on the other hand, it vaccinates you against life. When you do a proving of sickness, it somehow vaccinates you against the possible grief that will happen to you. You learn lessons. When we do, provings are like traveling to our unknown country, to our unknown place. And when I sit with friends and we drink a, a, a beer and a whiskey or two, and uh, we just telling of our life, I don't tell that I've been to that country or that country or that country. It's always my wife and my me are telling of our journey to Krypton and our journey into Cygnus and our journey into Eagle. These are the things that excite us, you know, and these are the things that the memories that we have in our life. Even the dates, I say, my first son was born in Salmon Year, my second son was born in Pomegranate Year, my third daughter was born in Cryptococcus Year. It's like that's how we remember the times in our life. Those are the adventures that we've been through. And, um, you know, yes, plutonium was an adventure, but there, there were more difficult experiences improving. But I think, you know, maybe plutonium will get me in my next life, if I have one at all. Because um, <coughs> the, the half-life of plutonium is 25,000 years. <laughs> so who knows what will happen to me, you know, in, uh, in 25,000 years to my soul. Maybe then the proving will come out. But this is a good point because one of the main things about plutonium is that we often say sins of the fathers visited upon the sons. So sometimes you have a case when somebody will come to you and say, you know, my grandmother was, uh, uh, had a terrible life, maybe she was robbed, maybe she was abused, and I feel it. It's in me. It's passed down the generations into me. That is something about plutonium that affects the genetic level, the genes, the, gen the DNA. That is what radioactive remedies get to. They get to right to our DNA. Um, and, yeah, that's what I say, you know, plutonium nitricum, Neanderthal man and Ikea man. I don't know if you have Ikea here in Mumbai. You don't? Uh, it's coming soon, I'm telling you, because they'll take over the world. Um, but that's the kind of difference between what we were and what we have become. Uh, Polaris is the North Star. Uh, I prove it after I once went to a seminar, <coughs> and there was a very famous homeopath there, and he said, I do not believe that all these remedies, we call them imponderables in homeopathy. You can't even think about it. He said, I don't believe these work. And I said, I don't know. Maybe he's right. Maybe it's not right. How can I tell? You know, it's like I, I don't, uh, you know, I can believe that they work, but belief is nothing. Either I know from experience or I don't know. So the only way to find out is to do a proving. 